It's the weekly 30-30 trading list on ASX. We're reviewing the 30 best momentum companies over the last quarter, and the ones that have had the best improvement in the last week, what we call the launchpad stocks. Gary Glover has been through both lists to pull out the most fascinating charts, the ones that we can learn from, and the ones that he's looking to trade. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Chris. Good. So the market's roaring. We know the positions that you've talked about in your own portfolio on Tuesday, they're going really well, forming exceptionally well. When you're working your way through the momentum lists this week, um, which charts are coming out to you? What's coming up and what's surfacing in this list? Oh, uh, yeah, commodities are on fire. So, um, and even, even like some of like, I think in the, some of the small names here, this is like number one here, I'm saying macro metals. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a VCP in there, but it's pretty small. So, the first few names on the on the list there, the first five or six there, there's some really sort of smaller names there, but they've gone crazy. And they've actually been, it's actually been some big volumes in some of those as well. And this one there, so there's a little VCP in here, but it's only under one cent stock there, but good, you see good volume through there. Um, I think NXM as well, it's, you know, that's had a bit of a run here, you know, some pretty good volume. I think AIS as well, I mean, well, that's just some good volume. So when I'm looking through all these sort of um, names here, like a lot of these um, resources, and uh, is I'm, I'm seeing actually, even though, even though, even in the smaller names, Chris, I'm seeing some pretty heavy trading volumes um, coming through here. Uh, which which is pretty interesting because sometimes you just get you know, get a lot of little of these names they just have a bit of a run and then maybe they fizz out a bit or they just you know um, or it's sort of a medium type of move here but seeing even amongst the, some of the smaller names here I'm just seeing big volumes um, in and a lot of these commodity driven sort of um, stocks here so that tells us there we we should be keeping an eye on all these so I think the first sort of five or six there were pretty small um, but they do have some pretty big volumes in there, so that yeah, I'd, I'd go through them, have a look at them, because they might have a pause and then and then go again, and maybe maybe they'll get slightly larger over time here. And um, WR1 number six was probably the first sort of decent size one there. Um, but I just said we had a little bit of a did sort of jump out of this little this pattern. Here. I think we had our little zero one two three pattern here, Chris. But going did did flash back below here, but did hold the fifty there. But you know what you did see there was you know this, um, not like not a little bit. There, yeah, not sure whether you sort of call it a little you know little cup and handle there, but it did the, the fact that we did jump up here, out of you know to a new high here, it, it's pretty positive there, and just because we've seen some good volume sort of come through as well, so just seen pretty good truck. Look at that pullback there as well, pretty pretty light there, so. Just seeing a lot of this actually, like a lot of these sort of um, sort of smaller one names here. So that, that's kind of got me excited here because I think, um, you know, if, it, if anyone hasn't had a look at the, the Tuesday report there, we're just talking about um, the commodity, you know, is the hop, commodities are just hot at the moment. Yeah, you know, we're getting big motors. You know, I think like tin was up 8%. On the one night this week here, I think zinc was up 4.5% there last week. I mean, gold's been going crazy, I mean, energy is going crazy, just all the metals are just on fire here. So you're just seeing that commodity complex really, really heating up, which which is not good for inflation, which, um, so I was, maybe I was one of the few who wasn't surprised to see a higher inflation print there last night. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm fearful that commodities keep running hot here, then that, that inflation is going to remain high as well. So, um, but that, what that does is opportunities, Chris, as well. I mean, a lot of these here is, is really where all the action is. Um, well, uh, just... While you're loading up the next chart, if anyone yeah. hasn't seen a Tuesday report, you've got its detail on, on inflation and where to look and where to invest. But we'll come back to this and focus on the charts at hand. What's um, Zata do XAM showing you? Yeah, this one's, a, this one's had an OK move here. So look, broken that downtrend there. Obviously, we sort of had a few downtrends there, and then we sort of started to get going. So if we're did break a swing high here, uh, but more importantly, seen a bit of volume there. Just seen no volume on the pullback, volume on the drives, you know, volume drying up on the pullbacks, driving right through. So you're seeing some good signs amongst sort of some of these smaller names there. So I know I probably gave some um, negative commentary around small caps there, Chris, on on Tuesday, but um, yeah, 
in this mining space here, we're seeing a lot of the small miners there um, really starting to come alive here. So there's going to be some good names in here. So to me, I, I you know, I, I think it's up some of this resource, you know, um, space here. This is where I'll be looking personally. I think at the moment here, just just seeing that, that sort of sector on on fire here. So um, what's this one here? Um, Auric Mining there, A W J there. So this had a pretty, you know, had had a little sort of cup and handle through here. VCP tightened up here again here, but what you're seeing there is just pretty good volume all the way up here. Then each of those the, drives, there's a one, two, three, there's at least five different drives and they've all got solid green. Yeah. Power. Yeah, even though it's still got still got sort of solid volume coming in here as well. So just looking for these things to sort of what you want to see is those little, you know, mining names have those little pulsive drives, then have the, the consolidation there and then once they start to break break out through there, that's, that's what you're looking for here. So I think there's plenty of names there that are looking pretty interesting there. Some obviously some sort of sort of smaller ones there. Um this was actually this was this was the new name I was talking about. So obviously they're pretty hard to trade IPOs. Do you want to basically sort of watch them sort of settle down a bit there? Oftentimes you see them come on hot, then they sort of fade, and oftentimes they take a lot longer there. But see this sort of built here, did did make a little bit of a break here, but didn't shoot through. But then the whole thing's consolidated under the high here. This this was a good sign here. Then that's the that's the whole VCP, the whole tightening up under the. Then once it broke through here. It's moved on there, so it's some good volume through there. No, this has had a couple of volume days. That's maybe a slight negative there, but good little setup here for a, for a small here coming out of the base. That, that's sort of something a setup to look for for some of those some of those newer names. Um, but uh, yeah, but again, just just another resource name there. Um, RXL. I thought this one was pretty interesting, Chris. Um, so. Just just because we've sort of got some big volume coming out of the low here as well, so been a bit of a downtrend for a while. So a bit bit of a nasty downtrend, but just some pretty chunky volume in here. Interesting to sort of see whether we get any follow through on the downside there. But this is one that I thought was sort of circled there. Um, I noticed it was in a little uh, rising star sort of conference there, little, little liners there. So just definitely one to keep an eye on there. Um, MLX was the one that they were talking about. You know, six months ago, I think I've mentioned this a couple of times here in the last three months. This was a stock that was touted by a lot of small cap managers. So they, you know, think they've, they've got it right. Yeah, so they'd be very happy here. This is, this is one that has moved here. But you can see here, this, this whole thing tightened up here, very corrective. And a big BCP here, and then you start breaking through here. So just important when you, if you do get those sort of, you know, you do hear it about some good names and, Brokers are talking about this stock here, potential, you know, might be potential, potential. You, you always got to be wary about this stuff there because, well, oftentimes you're hearing that commentary and then it's a capital raise. So, um, but if the price action starts to sort of fail, like you see some good volume there, start to break above it all high, then you start to build here. And then, so this thing has just sort of stayed above the 50 here now, kept building from here. But most importantly, had pretty good volume through here, did dry up here on the pullback. And then big volume again driving through again as well. So again, dried up here on the pullback as well. So good volume here. So just that's the type of thing you want to sort of see there. So uh, in this environment here, we want to see some volume coming in and then going through a little bit of tight pause there and so that. So uh, Prophecy was one that we spoke about last week, Chris. It's sort of gone on with it. A um, bit of a messy BCP in here. Um, but in fact, once we sort of break through the old high, Kicked on there. I think I sort of showed this weekly there last week as well. That's you know, that's some big consolidation, big breakout there on that stock there. Look at that, all the volume in the weekly. That's pretty solid. So, I mean, this has had a pretty good run here last time it congested and broke out. So, um, yeah, so pretty, pretty decent move there. We're talking about 66 here, we're already up to 95 here. So, you know, it's, it's always 30% higher here. So, um, Pretty pretty decent move there. Well, the arrow, I think IVR was another one I saw as well. So make a volume in there. Definitely got a new high here now. So yeah, so, so a lot of these socks are sort of showing that change in character. I mean, the good things there we're sort of saying, um, like a lot of these sort of um, names going, you know, breaking above old highs. 
but more importantly, we're seeing actually, you know, really strong participation in these rallies there. So we know if we see, like we see plenty of these stocks have a bit of a run and if there's not much participation, it tends to be a bit of a, you know, like a bit of a spike in a downtrend and then, then they just, you know, but then the selling, the selling just starts again. So you have this little spike here, the, you know, and then, and then it just sort of fades again as well. So, um, but when you start to see participation start to increase here, the way up here, dry up and then, and then increase again, that, that is the change that you're looking for there. So just important to look at that. But there's plenty of names there now sort of showing strong participation there. Like AMI, uh, just yeah, another metal sale. I mean, look, that's, that's just chunky. That's, you know, that's a, that we saw a good participation there. Probably too small for me. All, all coming out of this zone here. So what, once we get a close out of this zone here, from that sort of what, 12 cents there, um, it's just sort of got on here. So it's just sort of kept going. And that's been pretty good volume through here. Whole thing's tightened up here and that time. volume's pretty steady. So just seeing pretty strong participation there. So um, even 29M, which has had its issues there, it's sort of... Uh, that's had some um, yeah, big volume into the low, so obviously a bit exhaustive. Started to see some good volume come out of that low. Had a bit of a pullback on some, you know, probably you know, some bad news there. Has built again. So the whole thing now is sort of starting to tighten up under the high as well. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. So in, you know, seeing a lot of the um, few lithium names, a few copper names, a um, few those sort of diversified mining sort of um Rare earth sort of popping into some of the lists in the last sort of week or two, definitely in the week list this week. So, um, yeah, just just seeing some um, new names in there, but most of the boys, they were actually just seeing some pretty strong participation in these rallies here. So, um, you know, I think I'm, I'm long one industrial at the moment, Chris, and I think I'm long 60% kind of resist, which is just, well, I'm just not normally into that. You know, I don't normally hold trade that many resource stocks there, and I've got, I think I've got like a 25% sort of short on here. Um, so, um, yeah, so, it's, you know, everything looks, it look, looks, that's the way it looks to me. It's sort of, it's playing out at the moment as well, so it's nice there, sort of, uh, I'm trying to um, pick right and sit tight. I, I normally flinch pretty quickly when I see something, uh, you know, maybe it's not, you know, because I do sort of, if I scale up, I've got to watch it pretty tightly. And if I, if, I, if I see any sort of hesitation, then I'll, I'll trim it back. I just don't want to be too exposed there because you get you get hurt as well. So I like to get my wrist tight there. But I'm trying to not flinch. I'm trying to just sort of sit tight there because I sort of recognize when I've done my re, my re trading reviews that I'm, I'm trading too much. Um, and I'm also trading some of those sort of second, third tier names, whereas most of my gains are all coming from the top tier names. So like stick to the top end stick to the strongest names um scale in quickly sell in the heat um get to break even sit tight you know so over over the last um couple of months i've uh, uh i've realized i've been trading too much so I've, I've addressed that um i wasn't scaling up quick enough so i've addressed that um trying to sit you know sell in the heat i've addressed that um, sitting tight is the, is the thing I'm trying to address at the moment. So that's that's the work. So as traders here, we've got to keep proving, got to keep uh, got to keep reviewing your trades. Um, um, I know sort of um, you know, he says results don't lie. Look for commonalities and improve on your weaknesses there. So know the truth about your trading. Yeah. You know? So if you're just trading and then you're not actually reviewing what you've been doing for the last month or three months or six months or 12 months, then you don't really know because we're sort of, you know, we're showing you that our memories fade pretty quickly. We, we lie to ourselves constantly. So got to keep reviewing uh, and improving there. So, um, but that's the quarterly list all done there, Chris. And my well, little... Good insight from the yeah. quarterly ones. And then, as you've said, those themes coming through, the small, uh, underloved, mighty company, resource companies, as you cast your eye over to the top 30 launchpad stocks, so the ones that have had sort of the greatest improvement in the last week, is that theme sort of following through as well? You're seeing a fair few resources and the underloved resources light yeah, up? Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a few, obviously, there's a few smaller names in there, but there's also a few bigger names in there as well, Chris. I mean, um, I was pleasantly surprised to see S32, um, IGO, uh, Lion Town um, on the list there, because I thought, oh, hold on, I'm holding three of those. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's good to see that your stocks are doing the best of the week. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's, um, but you know, that's, but I think that's, that's what's sort of showing strength here at the moment. It's that I'm just, you know, looking at what are actually sort of holding up the best here. What's looking, um, uh, kind of robust there. So a few smaller names there. So this number one here was like, um, rate of resources and the answer, a bit small there, but this is this little tight VCP, all, you know, holdings tightening up here, dumped up there, probably a little bit small from there, but, um, DX sales, another one again, that little tightening up little kind of VCP as well, and then and popping up as well. So, seeing that similar sort of pattern there across a lot of these stocks here, Chris, well, so some of the smaller ants coming out. Um, that's that sort of chalice mining there. Look, look, definitely got some headway there. So, it's going to be up against some, some sellers trying to um, recoup their losses. Um, but yeah, um, this was another one that I saw ARR uh, there. Very good. Very good. Us. Yeah, just because we've had that big jump, this is this is what Cal Aggie looks for—a big, big explosive move, then it pulls back and has a pause. Probably he would like to sort of see it tighten up a bit more, maybe not fade as much, but it has come back at a nice ABC, and then we saw the volume just dry up in here, and then now we start to see volume come back in again. So this is sort of like okay, this is pretty interesting here. Actually, it's sort of um, showing me the strengths of volume there. Had a decent correction. That's, you know, you prefer to see that bit more of a high type flag. It's a bit deeper than you'd like to see. But that was a pretty explosive rally off the lows there. So that's that's the type of thing where you can get another leg up there. So that doesn't look too bad as well. Um, LAN, it's a bit small there, popping up. Not the best one there. Lion Tower, I quite like here just because, um, again, we've sort of got our low. You know, it's going to go to zero, one, two. Thought this might be the three here, but it's come back and held that low here. So this might be the three here, and then we're sort of building it. It's a little bit of a false, probably a little false break in here. But we do have a series of high lows that have just come back and set on the 50 there as well, which I always like quite quite like to see that, and then building through here as well. So that does look pretty solid. I think we'll weekly, again, good, good run there, good volume through there. Definitely see the volume pull back on the on the on the pullback as well, dry up here. And then we're looking for this to break to a you know weekly high there. So at last one twenty four last week. So we've gone above that this week. That's a good sign. We're seeing a you know when you see a contraction and then a weekly bar broke and that's when you can can get going here. So good signs there. Definitely feel like that um yeah commodity the commodity kind of complex here that that's that's the one that's just to me it's just standing out here across the board. Um some of the big movers there. You can see all these little names here getting big participation there. So there's actually um, getting some really strong participation in these rates here. So that inflation sprint, it was high last night. That is that is good for it. You know, that is good for it. Monday, Monday is a pretty, only pretty buoyant in high inflationary environment. So um, you've got to, got to trade what what the market's telling us there. Just got to trade that as well. So um, BSC was... Um, Big move there, prospect resources. So again, just another small name there. Some good news there. You know, seeing seeing a pretty, you know, some pretty strong moves and some of these sort of smaller names there. So the potential to have some big moves. Some of that. Um, IGO is sort of uh, one that I mentioned there. Just IGO, not not, not the best looking chart here, but we are starting to see a basic risk. That's the thing. So we've got our low zero, one, two. You know, I thought this might have been three here. Um, but it has come back and held that there now. So we do have three higher lows there. Just not seeing the super strong volume here, but definitely seeing a building process there. Um, so that, you know, we've basically broken the weekly high from last week there. So that's, that's, that's good signs there. It hasn't gone, hasn't followed through. Probably like to see a bit more volume. The volume wasn't that strong in last week. So um, looking okay without looking awesome. S32 looks a bit better to me. That one there is definitely got our zero, one, two, three pattern there. Now, uh, got our zip and zero, one, two, three. And it's jumped up here. I think I talked about the um, bit of a more speculative chart the other day. So we've got that sort of setup about it. Good volume here. 
good good setup on the weekly as well. That's like two thirds of the range as well. But it's just that's good volume. That, that added, that's pretty strong volume sort of driving through here. So maybe you get it. I mean, for me, the perfect setup here would have a little pause here, come back, sit on top of this old kind here, and then go again. So, um, but yeah, just looking pretty robust there. A lot of these mining names there. That's got some sort of stronger, you know, some, some stronger volumes down here. Looking quite good. So, um, I think even Linus was on the list as well, LIC. So, pretty messy down here, um, but a bit of a false break. Didn't, you know, went to a new low and didn't um, didn't sort of follow through. It has sort of bounced back here, but, yeah, it's just seeing some chunky volume as well. So, starting to see some really strong participation coming in for these miners there. So, you know, this this is pretty interesting there because that's been a really, this is corrective. That's overlapping, overlapping, overlapping here. So, this is this a, taking a long, long time here. Just hovering, hovering, hovering here. So um, this is one to watch here really closely there because that's just a very corrective orientation there. So I would like to sort of see, you know, a couple more high lows building in Hickrits, but that volume is really constructive earlier there. Got a first high low already. Just probably want to, you know, love to see a second or third high low. Um, but that does look pretty interesting there. We mentioned 29 and that was on the list. More than is that L, a bit small, EYE, sort of one of the biotechs there, sort of one that actually did, did sort of catch me. I thought this was a nice, pretty impulsive move here, tightened up here, but then, then the cap raising came instead of the, um, the other raising here, I think around 20, uh, it might have been 24 or something from memory. Um, so we've got the water here, but then that now it's, now it's sort of returning against my okay volumes there as well. So, uh, interesting one, sort of smaller name, but um, yeah, maybe just one to sort of keep an eye on. Um, but uh, what's we got there? I think, I think Whitehaven Coal was sort of yeah. So I sort of peer the coal names on this thing. One thing I did sort of see here, see how this have a rally here, and then so we've had like a bit of a you know, gone back up to the. Um, uh, I guess that little fold back technique, you know, we talked about, you know, sometimes markets will sort of, how they find a low, they'll trade out exactly the same way they that they went into it. So we saw we're kind of rallying back up to the high here. Had a bit of a pullback in here, a little bit of a little bit of a flag in here. Now, I guess you might call this like a little bull flag. And then we've broken out of that move there. And then if, you, if you're looking at that white hand, think, oh, is that a bull flag? If you're going, okay, what, what's, the, what's the other stocks that sector doing? It's like, okay, there's that little nice little flag in here as well. This, this has got a little flag as well. So they're both sort of, you know, both got a little bull flag going at the same time here. So the center field of the coal has been pretty far. So this is the thing about, um, you know, Stan Weinstein talks about trading. You know, if you get, get, the, get, the, get the same chart in two different sectors, you know, the, the, the strongest sector is going to perform to quite, you know, twice as good, you know. So the performance is like two to one. So that's why we got to look. That's why relative strength is so important. Um, so we just want to be looking at the stronger stocks here. So um, yeah, having having reviewed my trading there, um, I've just gone through and actually done my twenty two, twenty three year just recently. Reviewed all the trades in there. Yeah, far too many trades. Um, but when I looked at the winners and the losers of there. Um, you know, if I look at the bigger names and the leaders and the you know, that sort of maybe they sort of stronger fundamental sort of you know all kind of growth oriented stocks. So just just the obvious sort of growth companies, which ones that I really liked, they're the ones I'm paying close my money on. Whereas training down the line a bit, second tier sort of not I don't know, yeah, just sometimes you sort of look, oh you think, oh maybe this could move a bit larger. So even though you might take a smaller trade, you think it might have a bigger percentage move. Um they're the ones that invariably you sort of think, you know, might you know, kind of cost you as well. So if I, if I went through all my biggest losses, I think yeah, that wasn't even, that's not even, that's like a second or third tier name. What, what am I, why am I trading that? So um, those obvious. If you're talking about a company and its market capitalization, you're talking about third tier in respect to its relative strength, 
the sector strength and all the things that you just talked about, right? Not the company itself, but where it sits. Well, I think all those things, yeah. So it was probably, it's not a not a leader in our industry. That's not in the top two or three names. It's not a leader in terms of fundamentals as in earnings per share or sales revenue growth. Look, I've been definitely made the list of being a growth company, but was it one of the stronger names? And then technically... I probably thought, oh, this thing might move more than maybe another name, um, as opposed to a safer, stronger leader name. Um, and then, then that, then that company ends up having issues and then that's, um, or it gets weakness there and then, or, you know, does raising a site, you know, it's like, it's funny how a lot of these sort of things that catch you out the market happen to the second or third tier name. So that they generally don't happen in the top tier. Not to say they can't happen, they won't happen. Now you'll, you'll you will get caught maybe once or twice a year, even in a strong name or a good company, and something might um, go wrong. I think I think MP1 got me last year, um, but that was yeah, re- 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 reasonably contained, um, got out straight away. Um, but yeah, most of the losses I could sort of saw there were um, we just did those sort of second or thirteen names. So it just it just confirms, you know. Uh, yeah, basically, sort of just focus on you know. Um, I only trade the leaders and the strongest stocks. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been reading, like, been going over many, many stuff here recently, and just, just around the strong, you know, strongest and yeah, names and stuff. They're relative strength. They're just, I, I, li- I literally sort of studied the, uh, you know, five of the best, what, what I call super performers. I'm doing a, doing a presentation in May in Adelaide, so if anyone is going to be in Adelaide uh, in May. Um, around the fifteenth of May, I'll get some details out there. But yeah, please, please come along. Um, but I'm looking at. I've been doing a bit of work on the relative strength, looking at the traders who've got the best, you know, super performance, so triple digit gains, and not just a one off guys who have actually consistently done it back to back. You know, you know, multiple years in a row, or done it for many, many years, and. There's just so many consistencies in there, and and it, they're all trading. It's all relative strength. They're all trading the leaders groups. So they're, they're, they're trading strongest names there, and um, concentrated um, risk management scaling in, scaling out. You know, just all the things we're talking about. So yeah, it's just part of confirming the process there. So just gotta you know keep us in the strongest and you know some of the bigger names as well. Um, yeah, I know the small cats can come with some pretty juicy gains sometimes, but to me, you know, there's, there's a bit more risk in there, you know, so you really got to know the company. You really got to um, have a really good handle on, on, the, on those sort of companies there before you, you know, kind of bet on them too big. Well, that's a good insight to share with reflecting over the financial years worth of trading, trading too much, trading too much in the Bs and the Cs. And I dare ask maybe next time I want to discuss, hang on, if you'd only traded the As. How much of a performance difference would have that made? And I know you've done that before in previous years and come away enlightened and reshapes your trading approach, which is only worse sort of to call about even more gross. So uh, that's the, the insights. We really appreciate you sharing. And uh, also, as you said, the 15th of May is out in Adelaide and you'll share the details. I'll probably put that in the notes below. And uh, any more gems you want to share with us, or you think you've imparted enough knowledge with this? Uh, to no, and no, I guess it's I mean, it's just it's I guess it's all around just trying to you know I guess as traders there we got to uh, trying to avoid that sort of style drift, um, you know, define your sort of trading style, um, you know, you got to sort of sacrifice, you got to become a specialist, just try and become very good at one or two things, you know. So I've sort of. Each time I've narrowed my trading down from 10 down to 5, my performance improved. And then I've sort of gone down to, say, from 5 down to 3 or 4, it's improved again. So um, I'm, I'm going to try and narrow it down to 2 next 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 financial year. That's my, my, my goal is to basically just specialise on two, 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 um, two patterns, two trading setups, and focus on those as well. And, um, yeah, hopefully that will be... That'll be it. I can, I can just focus on those two, uh, make make that up, you know. Um, you know, hopefully I, I become like Minavini where I just trade those two for the rest of my life and um, make triple digits every year. That, that sounds pretty good to me. 
I'll see you all right year next year. <laughs> That's yes. all it takes, just two stages. <laughs> Why not? Well, maybe one. Maybe maybe they uh, maybe they get say you know fifty percent on each. Be nice, but yeah, it's sort of not. That's probably not where I, I probably want to be better. I want to be better than that, to be honest with that. So, um, you know, we'd like to be sort of getting up towards some of these, um, some of these great performers. I mean, there's, there's plenty of guys out there who have done the triple digit gains for the year, so it can be done. Um, so you've got to have, you've got to set yourself some pretty um, high goals there. So um, why, rest, why rest until we uh, achieve those goals? So that's, that's what I'm going to try and do for the next couple of years. Well, with that inspiration, we'll take that to the end and say thank you very much, Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Thanks, Chris.